Arr, grog. Hey everyone, it's a Sideshed podcast with me, Peter Fickling, Kerry Warbis and Matthew Weir. Well, we're not the most sort of sentimental of folks, but uh, it was very sad to hear this week that Graham Blocky had died, who plays Robert Snell, of course. And uh, I think we would we would always make a, a, a fuss of someone, you know, a character that we care about, an actor that we care about so much passing away. But he's particularly special to us, isn't he? He's a, he's, he's a great character and he was amazingly played by Graham. Yeah, that was a very sort of shocking announcement. It took me a bit by, by surprise, really. Um, I, he hasn't been on The Archers for some time. And then people were on Twitter were talking about, actually, it's been much longer than I'd recalled. But um yeah, he he and Linda, he was such a good foil to Linda. Yes. As a character, wasn't he? And played really well in that he absolutely adored her. But then she's quite a fearsome character, but he would often be happy to challenge things that she was doing or saying. Linda wouldn't be half the character she was without sort of Robert as that foil. And I... On the one hand, I don't want to lose the character, but on the other hand, it's kind of almost the ultimate char- uh, compliment to, to Graham's acting that I cannot really imagine anyone else. It's not, no offence mm. to the multiple Tonys, but it's not like when Tony came and went, you're just like, oh, okay, find another Tony. It's like, no, I, I think I would find it quite hard to adjust. Oh, definitely. I don't think they can do that with him. Yeah. There was something about the way Jeremy Howe worded the tribute as well, where he said he Graham's Robert Snell was a brilliant creation, creation and a delicious one-off. Made you feel that that was, that was maybe it that they won't have another yeah. actor doing that. I mean, it might be wrong. I might be wrong. It also, you know, you you have to have been listening since 1985 to have heard to, to have listened to the Archers without him as well. So that's like you know, that's a serious investment. It's mm. a big block of time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, one scene that I thought was absolutely wonderful. And it wasn't one of those scenes where he was calming Linda down. It was the scene where Blake spilt the water at the dinner table and then panicked and ran upstairs. And there was just this long silence. And Robert just said, I'll just uh, I'll just clean this up because they neither of them knew what to do. But he just mm. had that wonderful calm in that situation. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, I think he was a really, really sensitive character, wasn't he? And and played that way so well, mm. and and also uh, uh, I think a good representation for for you know more gentle men who mm. do have a kind of a, a backbone and a and a, a sort of a moral backstop as well. Like you know when he when when pushed to his limit, he did always stand up for what what mattered. Yeah. So should we go to an advert now, so we can just be silly after this? Well, I, I was going to say always always willing to dish out the boner pills as well. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> so, uh, Matthew f***ed the respectful bit at the beginning. So. <laughs> it happened in the show. What? It happened in the show. Oh, no, you're right, you're right. You're absolutely right. And, and Oh, no, no. No, God, I've totally messed that up. It was Lillian that got Justin's boner pills and gave them to Robert. Sorry. Well, we're not redoing it. That's, it's for, you know, that, that's, um, that's our eulogy. He had some boner pills, didn't he? That'll do. He was he was boner pill proximate. Um, <laughs> talking of uh, Cox, uh, George. So I, I I think I hinted at my views just before we started the pod. What did you guys think of um, George the entrepreneur? Um, it was interesting hearing him trying to be an adult and speak in an adult way. I loved some of his interactions with Martin Gibson, like when yeah. Martin answered the phone, Gibson. That was great, yeah. <laughs> um, I did laugh and George, he's trying to be something he isn't um, and using, you know, like when G- Martin said he was, Gibson, when, <laughs> when he said he was checking his cellar and George said something about the wine cellar. Fantastic job if you need any recommendations <laughs> from a 17-year-old. <laughs> yeah. I've written down Gibson with lots of O's. Can we all just have a go at answering our phone? Mm. What, in our, with our names? With your surname, the same way he answers mm. his phone. Kerry, you go first. Warbis. Peter? Fickling. <laughs> we are... <laughs> 
I, I was trying to just more lean into the Gibsonness rather than doing a kind of straight facsimile. I, th- yeah. I really, I, I mean, I really like this new Martin Gibson playing around with George, you know, like a little kind of, you know, like a cat with a mouse. Hmm. Um, and then also today, just when he was kind of like, yeah, here's someone I can easily exploit to uh, turn into a horrendous facsimile of, you know, of my dastardly and terrible soul. Yeah, what a pair. What a pair. But the thing is, he won't turn him into a facsimile, will he? George is hoping he will, but he won't. He'll just use and abuse him and George will end up realising and being a broken George, I think. But but it is the archers. There is a tiny chance this might actually be their way of, you know, turning George into a sort of a, a bit of a kind of Vince Casey Jr. This is, you know, his, this is his origin story. Because we started the week, didn't we, with Emma wondering where where's the boy gone who liked helping out on the farm? Uh, and, and you didn't go to that fireworks family pizza thing. And you think, God, every time an event happens, they have to mention that the pizza, <laughs> the pizza van was present. Yeah. <laughs> and because teenagers, you know, when they're about 16, 17, going on 18, they love to hang out with their parents at social <laughs> events, don't they? I, I thought the only reason that Martin Gibson's interest was piqued because he'd missed Heard and he thought that he thought that George was offering up peasants. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take some of those. I'd use them at Barrow. For £2.50 each. Yeah. <laughs> he needed Brad there to help him with the maths, didn't he, George? I think it uh, didn't really work out for him. Yeah, just a bit. But like George was saying things like, um, oh, you know, for old time's sake, I'm trying to spread the happiness. It, and and Martin, I think part of Martin did like that George was having a go because he thought, I think he said, well, you've got a nerve, haven't you? I'll give you that. You um, would, wouldn't you? I mean, if you've got, if you've got sort of Martin Gibson money mm. and, it's, and he's going to deliver the birds, I mean, well, there's the big hole, which is obviously the bird flu thing. Yeah. Which is, you know, but like, just, just let's say it's in our life. Like there was some kid down the street and it didn't really hurt you to go out of your way. And it was like a 20 quid or something. You'd be like, mm. oh, why not, you know, indulge them. Yeah. What ripped them off? Well, was he, but was he though? I mean, he was absolutely desperate. He completely screwed up his, they were scrawny little pheasants. Yeah. I suppose he, he made half the, half the amount he paid for them, didn't he? 37 yeah. 50, exactly half. Yeah. Permission to put the pig amongst the pheasants? <laughs> Is it possible Martin Gibson has a bit of a crush on young George? Because I quite often find that people who project about, well, who are quite homophobic, turn out to have <gasps> tendencies themselves. And he was very rude and nasty about Paul, wasn't he? Denise's son. Mm. I don't, I don't mind what they do in their private life, but I don't want them, you know, he, he, he stopped short of saying, shoving it down the, my throat, which is always, always an interesting choice of phrase for people <laughs> when they complain about the gay community, isn't it? I don't yes. mind what they do in the privacy of their own home or on my um, safe search in <laughs> third browser that no one knows about, but yeah. Yeah, we need to have a look at, we need to have a look at that Gibson hard drive. I reckon when you turn it on, it goes, Gibson, <laughs> I'm now worried about George. Yeah. I don't think I don't think they have enough gay characters or well rounded gay characters in the village to suddenly bring in a some kind of horrible Yeah, to have a negative angle on it. Yeah. yeah. I think it would just be too much. Mm. I, I they would you know, that it would be yeah. Because because, you know, it's a anyway, you know what I'm saying. It just yeah. would be unpleasant. I did think it was it was horrible how George, you know, Emma is ill, isn't she? Which we'll probably speak about as well. Um, and Emma had to go off to help Fallon make some sort of weird horse cake that she seemed to be really gid- <laughs> giddy about. Um, oh, giddy and horses. Uh, but he wouldn't even help peel the bloody potatoes, would he? For mm. tea. Oh, when's our tea going to be then if you're going out now? She's like, oh, well, if you help, that'll really be good. He's like, I can't. I've got college work to do. Wouldn't even peel some potatoes. And then as soon as she'd left, he was on the phone to Dredger or something. He's way behind in his computer games as well. Didn't you say I've got Frogger 2? I didn't understand what he said that game was. And that came out in 84 for the Spectrum. (laughs) 
I, I, that made me really angry when he mm. he tried to manipulate his mother or he just lied to his mother. And and also, you know, and as always, I have, it's compulsory I have to say this, Kerry will know better than me, but even my little boy understands where food comes from and that, you know, he's only three and a half. Waitress. It's not waitress. <laughs> you Lewish him. <laughs> Kerry, I do not need someone who votes for Caroline Lucas in Brighton <laughs> trying to give the waitrose to me and, you know... Peter, unbelievable. Peter, have I asked you before? <laughs> have I asked you before? Is there like a restaurant takeaway called The Taste of Lewisham? Have you seen it? Uh, no, I haven't. No, I don't think so. Oh, no, I mean, our, our world. Our, we used to. We used to get all over the place in mm. southeast London. But you know, toddler life since the lockdown, we see a very limited slice of Lewisham. So, I'm almost yeah. sure I've seen a photo of a place, but it, with like kind of italics writing, and it was called the Taste of Lewisham. But it might be an old photo. The Taste of Lewisham is um, diesel and <laughs> discarded uh, um, chicken bones. That's, oh, nice! Uh, yeah, that's the I taste. Know that. I actually, I actually lived in Lewisham for a bit, but I was about two. My bro- my brother was born there. That's where the ch- yeah. That's where all the chicken bones come. Yes, yeah, I was going to say that's where all the chicken bones came from. Still here, yeah. <laughs> when I was two years old. Oh dear! But wasn't it horrible that Neil? I, it really jars, and they're obviously doing this on purpose. But when Neil describes George as a good, oh, he's a good lad. He's responsible and reliable. You think, oh, he couldn't even peel some f-ing potatoes for his mum. I mean, yeah, he's a. He's a bit of a deadbeat when it comes to the, to the domestic chores. But he's, what is he doing if he's going to go to the tea room and help Fallon? And then mm. he's going to say, oh, I don't know, but I don't want money for it. Okay, maybe just a fiver. Is he just, does he think this is how he becomes an entrepreneur? By putting his fingers in multiple pies? Oh, and of course he wanted to rent the cottage as well, oh, using a well, syndicate of his 17-year-old mate. Not really. I don't know. I mean, you can rent at 17, but I think the... Not if you're not earning anything. <laughs> no. And I think the landlord is going to get a bit jumpy. The landlords tend to get jumpy unless you're like in your early 30s now, don't they? So A bit jumpy. Would you rent out your place to a few 17-year-old blokes? No, but I'd, I'd, pr- I'd probably choose them over Jacob. Oh, no, no, no. Would you? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, Jacob, I'm worried. He was going through the minutia of the contract, which Chris had completely failed to realise he had to draw up as well. And uh, structurally, I, I presume uh, you won't come round and check the basement if the neighbours complain about a funny human flesh smell. Stop it. Jacob is bloody great. I've been watching Monster, so I can't kind of help. Uh, the Jeffrey Dahmer thing on Netflix. So, uh, Oh, I don't know how you can watch that. I got about... I got about three minutes in, and my squeamishness kicked in. I watched the whole um, thing in a binge. I I did know when when Linda was trying to get away from Tony on Monday. It did remind me of people <laughs> trying to get out of Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment when he started putting on Exorcist. Yeah, but Kerry, you you are you know you're pretty much as close to being Jeffrey Dahmer as you can be without a <laughs> The best, but the, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, I'm watching it with someone who doesn't know the story at all. Oh. Yeah. Well, they've probably grasped what, what's going on. Well, they know what's going on, but they, they don't know how it ends. Yeah, but don't say that about Jakob. He's a delight. I love when he when he rang. Um, George, no, who did he ring? Chris. Yes. That's it. Um, oh, my ears lit up, <laughs> if that's possible. You had just been listening to a lot of Tony and a lot of Alice. Oh, I... Do you not love him though? And he's, he's... No, I do adore him. That's my point. No, I I do like him, but he is a total serial killer. His tambourine story. Yeah, he th- he th- he <laughs> thought you could get a tune out of a tambourine. <laughs> to his bizarre kind of sonar hearing, he mm. probably was playing. He thought mm. it was a symphony, and it was just cuts to him as a little kid hammering this tambourine in front of his long suffering family and calling a Brussels sprout an obnoxious weed. I would like to know his full backstory. I guess if I feel like he's, you know, a European kid who moved to the UK. Well, we're part of Europe, obviously. But, you know, a mainland European kid who moved here at a young age. That's my sort of 
Yeah. But I'm taking was, from it all. I was wondering that today. When did he come over from? I mean, he's way too culturally assimilated for it to have been kind of like in his late teens. Mm. His accent's too impeccable. So I'm thinking, you know, he must have come across when he was 10 at the latest. But I don't know. I see such a fascinating character. I want to know a lot more yeah. about it. I liked the fade out. That was good, wasn't it? Oh, that was, it? That was perfect, yeah. yeah. They don't do many yeah. of those. If any, I mean, can yeah. I? Can you remember them doing that before? Um, Ruth and David having sex. Did they? No. <laughs> Did they have sex? <laughs> just imagine them fading, fading out over their <laughs> moans of pleasure. And everyone just sat kind of in the fetal position, rocking. <laughs> you made a good point about the fade out there, didn't you, Matthew? Yeah, mm. I should have faded back up on Tuesday with him still talking. <laughs> and another thing. Um, <laughs> hey, by the way, Martin Gibson thinks that uh, the, the pigs might offer an alternative Christmas dinner. I was like, Does, what about the Christmas ham? Doesn't everyone have a Christmas ham and a turkey? I've never done that. Ah, okay, that's interesting. It's absolutely mandatory in Ireland. It's so mandatory in Ireland that when they had that... Do you remember there was that swine flu about 12 years ago? Um, mm. And there was massive panic in Ireland about how we're going to get the Christmas ham. And we're going to have to get it in from France, etc. Oh, gosh, <laughs> can't say it's that much of a problem here in my in my house to be honest. it is a thing yeah what's the what what's going to make the warmest household panic kerry <laughs> well i've got my booze coming next week to get in early for christmas um i've also got my turkey in already as well a frozen one That's in the terrible. oven yeah, <laughs> yeah, with the sprouts on the hob. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that a Nigella slow cook recipe? Yeah, um, no, I have started buying stuff for Christmas. In fact, I was going to ask you both the question that Linda asked: um, What is your most vivid memory of Father Christmas? Uh, I remember going to see him in Fairfax House in. Bristol, which was then demolished to create the galleries. And I've mentioned Fairfax House once before. Well, immediately Pe after your visit. Yeah. Peter, were, yeah. Peter, no, I wasn't responsible for the demolition. <laughs> yeah. get. I'm sick of that white bearded, <laughs> I'm not going to swear, demolish the building. But no, the lifts, I told you, they didn't have doors. They used to just go mm. up and go down in a loop. Yeah. That's what, I, that's what everyone remembers Fairfax House, mm. like some kind of nightmarish memory. So you went and saw him in the grot in the grotto. Yeah, and I got a badge that says I saw Santa at Fairfax House somewhere. Did did you go to see Santa, uh, Peter? Not really, I don't think. Not really. I my, my we always moved around a lot. Mm. At Christmas, you know, like my dad was in the army, and then my stepdad, um, his job moved made us move around a lot. So when pa one parent was moving, the other parent was moving. You know, when one parent wasn't moving, the other parent was moving. Ah. Peter went to see Pagan Moon Lord of Christmas. Yeah, every year. I'd be posted <laughs> off to, you know, um, some kind of Burning Man style. Oh, sort of what's, it, no, what's it? Not Burning Man, Wicker Man, you know. Wicker Man. <laughs> pagan ritual. But no, so for me, Christmas was going to my grandparents' house. And mm. it was, I always slept in the same bed. There was always the same teddies. And I think there was a kind of real sort of stability about going back to this you know, like it was like, you know, set oh, in stone. an anchor sort of thing. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And uh, nice. and um, they were always incredibly generous and there was always, you know, it was always like a sort of a, also the rules were a little bit more, my parents are not strict, but, you know, like, you know, a lot of fun could be had at this house, big mm. garden and all that sort of stuff. So I think it was just like a sort of like a very bougie week. That's nice. And, it, and I just also, I remember, um, I think like a lot of people, just watching a bunch of, sozzled adults kind of slumped in chairs <laughs> while you play with your lego you know, did, yeah. did you did you ever get a um, hand knitted jumper in a box <laughs> that you <laughs> thought was a train set uh, i i am I, um, my 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 grandfather to his credit he bought me the present this is where matthew can get one back on me for my, all of my big track piss taking <laughs> where i painted him with some little little lord fontleroy my grandfather got me the Lego train set. Mm. Oh, my days. Yes. No yes. recession in that house. No, no, not that year. Yeah. And um, anyway, so what happened was they gave me the power unit 
and said the rest will you know we're gonna we'll get, give you the rest next year wow what as a joke Oh, for Light God's sake, I thought that was actually the truth then. No, no, but the thing is, is that <laughs> I was such a, things have changed obviously, but I think I was such a lovely little boy that I kind of like put on this kind of enormous Oscar winning pantomime of gratitude, like, oh, wow, and was kind of there kind of twiddling the knob. And... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> But I think, yeah, but yeah, so I did get jumpered with that. But then they brought out the train set immediately. And got, yes, and then I, yeah, oh. yeah. And you know, uh, but unlike but unlike Tony, this is probably the first time I've mentioned it since. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I like the way Jim just cut straight to the chase in the pub and was just like, "Did you ever get ask for <laughs> Father yeah. Christmas for a guitar, Tony? For <laughs> sake, that's what she's been getting at for the last five episodes." Hallelujah! Although I quite enjoyed Linda asking those silly questions, which I, which that's unlike me really i i normally hate these silly things mm. i quite enjoyed linda doing that kerry very quickly did was mm. there a christmas where um you were desperately hoping for a full kind of iberian <laughs> jam on and instead there was a latvian folk dancing outfit with uh, you know, kind of wooden <laughs> shoes dancing shoes or something? Wood. <laughs> <laughs> um no i don't think I don't, there was one year i think um I was disappointed because I think my brother got more or bigger or better or all of those things, gifts, than I did. Mm. Uh, that was when I was at primary school. I can remember ha- that. Have you ever done that as an adult to another adult, though? Like done the whole fake present and kept back the real present to see them feign um, gratitude? No, I'd never do that. Yeah. <laughs> my mum did that. My mum did it to my dad when we were a kid. So like, she gave him like a little bottle of perfume and a pair of socks i think and she actually she'd bought him a leather jacket and she'd hidden it that he desperately wanted and she hid it it under the tree and he just sat there trying to look but um she couldn't keep it up (laughs) like she didn't want it he was trying to look happy he still maintains to this day he was happy uh but um but she may have been (laughs) but then she she said she felt guilty i like my socks now I've, I've, i've reached that stage of life where a really nice pair of sturdy socks brilliant sturdy you know socks that you can you know stomp around in then it's mm-hmm. it holes every five f- minutes yeah i bought some al- alpaca socks the other day made yeah, from yeah. alpaca wool i demand an apology for the waitrose comment <laughs> alpaca socks living it's the, in brighton <laughs> it's the most i've spent on socks ever in my entire life i bought i bought mimi a pair and myself a pair because we've got no f-ing boiler and we're cold I'm going to try and find when I'll be able to isolate the sounds. I'm going to see if I can uh, clip in now the indignant sound of me jabbing my table with my pencil while I was saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can sense it. Don't worry. But yeah, it's week nine of no boiler next week. So, you know, I think we deserve some bloody socks. Okay, if you are allowed nice socks. Yeah, thank <laughs> well, you. Were they two shades of green? <laughs> I left you an oh. audio about that, didn't I, Kerry? I came home and I was like, I had the, one of those moments where I just, I was listening to the archers and I just started laughing and couldn't mm. stop. It was a bit where Tony said, and it was two shades of green because they'd knitted it from, some, what was he said, Granny had knitted it or something. Yeah. And two different types of wool. They tried to tell me it was camouflage. <laughs> I'd lost heart by then. <laughs> by the way, just to confirm my status as the kind of curmudgeonly old miserablist on this pod. Yeah. These two wits are like teenagers they leave those voice messages on WhatsApp. <laughs> absolutely nightmarish i Aww. i'm not a fan of the the voice messages but i listen you know i'm trying to get down with the kids or down with a what are you now kerry 56 year old yeah i'm 57 hey, just leaving Thanks. a voicemail for peter the miserable bastard on the side of shared whatsapp group peter yeah. please leave us a couple of voices in the next few days voices yeah what are you Rylan or something? Voices. <laughs> I like that term. Well, yeah. it, it, so Peter, are you saying it's something that culturally you're not? But see, the thing is, in Brazil, everyone le- everyone leaves voice. No- well, I used to call them audios. Apparently, when you come to Europe, everyone calls them voice notes. In Brazil, you do it because time is at a premium, and you do not want your phone out in the street. Oh God. So that's why you do it. That's why that's they're so depressing. popular in Brazil. No, but that's true. 
Spotify. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But the thing is, when instead of typing at length, just bloody spit into the microphone. Yeah, it's much I, better. I, I, it doesn't seem to be a thing in in Ireland and the UK that much. But when you when you cross over to the the continent, it's very common. And mm. uh, yeah, I had a friend who lives in Italy who was interviewing for a job back in Ireland. And the guy sent instructions on how to leave a voice note in WhatsApp. And she's like, uh, yeah, I know. I do it all the time. Oh. So it's, it's not that commonplace. Give it a go, Peter. There'll be, there'll be absolute gold. We often review media. Oh, yeah. We jointly <laughs> review media, just ping-ponging voices to each other. About... Yeah, I've been, I've, been, I'm, I, you know, I, I've been cut out of the loop now. I live you know, a very lonely life. Obviously. Yeah, you oh. won't join in that, though, will you? Well, no, I'm very grateful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's only so many times Kerry and I can watch Highlander. <laughs> hey dear. So, um, um, yeah. how do we segue? So, controversial, controversial use of technology. Um, Tony's trains. Oh, solar. Controversial technology. There you go. There was something in there, wasn't there? Yes. Um, so, Ruth and David are fucking idiots. Yep. Ben is a fucking yep. idiot. Yeah. I'm gonna get all my out in one. You know. It's a fucking. Oh my God, that's oh. that's a whole separate section. But so, so let's start with Ben. I yeah. I've had enough now. Just grow a pair, and I don't mean that in some kind of sad kind of alpha male way. I just mean like we all understand it's too much. He's just he's he's wet. He's pathetic. He's such a fucking victim, isn't he? So dreadful. Oh, it's my fault. It's my mess. I'll I mean, good grief. Forty grand. I'll give up my college course and earn. Uh, go and get a job and most of my earnings will pay back the loan. What's he going to be doing as a job? I mean, I joked on Twitter that he could then join Rory as a gigolo and earn it before Christmas. Yeah, but... I, put, I put that out through our Twitter as well. Why, I mean, Pip, Josh and Ben are all single. Sign up to Rory's Shagathon. Oh <laughs> and Dave, David and Ruth can do it and so can Jill and Leonard. Leonard and Jill can do an OnlyFans and people can watch in that mm. new room. Yeah. David and Ruth, I don't know what they'd do. <laughs> they don't like each other enough to have sex anymore, do they? How much would you pay to have sex with someone at Brookfield and who would it be? What would be your absolute ceiling? Um, I can't. I don't think you'd have to break a tenner for me. The rotating cow brush. <laughs> <laughs> I'd position it very carefully. And you'd cover the electricity. <laughs> it wouldn't take long, don't worry. We'll put we'll uh, we'll face in opposite directions and we'll get value for money two for one there. I'll be with you. I've al- I've always quite fancied. David always says that he needs to get up and service the pulsators. That always sounds quite good to me. You literally just said I've always quite fancied David. If you can edit that, Peter. <laughs> no problem. Consider it Thank done. You. Tick. <laughs> I've always fancied David. I've always fancied David. I've always fancied David. I've always fancied David. I've always fancied. Basically, all of us are having sex with farm equipment then, rather than dealing with those. <laughs> yeah. I those do. Uh, I, I know I've got a kicking for it before. I do quite fancy Pip. No, you don't. Kind of weird. I do no, in a weird that's way. That's because yeah. you like the actress. Is it? I and think what she's she doing looks the, like. Yeah, but I think she's doing the direct line ads now as well, and that kind of turned me off. Yeah, but th- that doesn't count. You can't fancy a character because of the you fancy the actress you don't fancy pip do you just think about the scene with her and chelsea just think about it yeah she was absolutely appalling well all right then let's focus on the positive chelsea has been an absolute boss to the point where even she said what you guys have said as well that she was like well why does why is ben being such a drip get on with it and Mm. there is this idea now that uh, i hope it's not setting her up for a fall but I get this idea that everyone is saying, yeah, you go, Chelsea. Like, There was that, the bit where it, there was, it went up and then it went down where Pitt was saying, you, I talked to you. Why didn't you tell me it was your brother? I was like, why didn't, why didn't Chelsea just say, because your brother didn't want me to f-ing tell anyone. He didn't want your mum and dad to find out. Of course, I'm not going to tell you, Pip. That was, it was so heinous, that, wasn't it? That Pip mm. is attacking... A uh, young girl, is she 17? I, I can never mm-hmm. remember the age yeah. of people. Um, yeah, although she could be any age, she could be 60, it would still be, as, it would still be absolutely Yeah, boring. But, you know, very young, vulnerable, just been through quite a sort of traumatic personal experience. And she decides, I'll go to her workplace, 
I know it was to see Elizabeth. It wasn't. She didn't go there with the intention of doing this. But then really verbally laid into her about the failings of her own brother, essentially. It's the entitlement. She knows that this young woman is trapped at work, will basically have to risk, you know, censure or being yeah. demanded or, or have to face her kind of really odious rant. And mm. even though later she apologised and was all kind of like, you know, all the, oh, he's my little brother or whatever excuses she was using. Mm. I just It's just very, very distasteful. And I, I, I you know, I, I developed a... I, you know, do you know what? In the past, my dislike of Pip has always been a bit sort of theatrical or kind of like pantomime. <laughs> um, you know, I've never really... You won awards for being an actor, haven't you, Peter? I have won an award for being an actor. Thank you very much for wondering, <laughs> Kerry, yes. Um, and now it's it's getting there. I really do dislike her. She's up there mm. as one of the characters I genuinely cannot stand. And when she's on air, I feel a little bit down. What a household, eh? Brookfield. Mm. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I mean, but Vince, Vince's behaviour has been absolutely appalling, but their reaction mm. to it hasn't been much better. Although, sorry to go dart off on another sort of tangent, mm. it, it has been a complicated week. But, like, Elizabeth just trotting up like like nothing's happened and being like, oh, well, you, my mm. Vince, you know, he's, you, you wouldn't know what he's like at home. He's much, he's totally different. It's like, fuck off, Elizabeth. He feels things deeply. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. talking about last week's episode. Um, I th- yeah, I'm glad you brought that up here because it's quite a contrast to last week when she said, how dare you go around to Ben's house and raise mm. your voice and threaten him? And what was he thinking confronting him in the bull? And then he's like, oh, and he's going to financially ruin Dave. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't she step in? I don't understand. Yeah, it didn't. It wasn't consistent, was it? But the thing is, she she is to give her her due she is saying he is acting like a spoilt brat I think was the, were the words she used and I'm not really excusing her but she, it's on her radar and what she's hoping is that he as usual realizes that was a bad thing to do it was interesting how she said oh often he then backs down and I thought oh often that's not very healthy is it he's often mm. like flaring up like this and yeah. is then backing down. Awful. Do you remember? Do you remember a while ago when he was secretly buying a present for Elizabeth, and he, she called him, and he was waiting at, um, he was waiting to pull out of a junction, and he got road rage with the guy. Yeah. Is this all leading up to? Yeah. Oh, do you know what it reminds me of when they used to leave little little nuggets for Philip Moss and his temper? Mm. I feel like we're going to find out something about Vince down the line. I've got a solution to all of our problems. Uh, Brookfield give the uh, slave master Ben in return for the cost of the roof. Brookfield keeps (laughs) it solar. We get rid of Ben. Vince makes a tidy profit. Lovely. Mm. I reckon they sell the land near Hollow Tree to a mystery buyer, and it turns out to be Vince, and he builds builds like a massive department store called (laughs) Wonderhoods. God, please, please, please. Yeah. But anyway, can oh. I, I, I know I, I touched on it briefly and we, we got carried away with Pip hate. Chelsea was brilliant this week. Yeah. I thought yes. the way that, I mean, Neil is back. That's another thing. But mm. when <laughs> that line where Brad was like, I need a haircut. And she went, Princess Leah's coming to Anbridge. Is that yeah. it? <laughs> I, I do wish she had given him a pompadour though. Well, skin fade, undercut, and a pompadour, wasn't it? Is that that weird fold over fringe thing that people have? I was about to say, well, you two are our youth correspondents being so hip and down with everything. I thought a pompadour was something the Prince Regent had. <laughs> Let's have a look. Is it, what, is have, it you not? Seen, have you seen that strange haircut that the youth have right now? The, the men, the boys, where it's kind of like they've folded their fringe back over on itself. Oh, do some footballers have it? Yes. No, a pompadour is like a massive Ryland style um, quiff, but like w- with oh. a real bouffant. What, like Morrissey or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. such a sort of old fashioned l- word though. It looks like a whale has beached on your head. I mean, you know, in, in, the, in the female form, yeah, it's almost up there with the beehive in the female form. 
Ah, right. Yeah, I'm now looking at the pompadour. I do mm. love a quiff on a man, though. Oh, I'm I'm thinking of um I'm thinking of doing a new haircut. I'm thinking of going for a kind of um now that I've got so much grey hair, I was thinking of th- thinking of trying to go for Newcastle era Janola, like big flowing grey locks. Oh yeah. To go with my new life down by the coast. Do it. Yeah. So Did you have long hair in the past? Uh when I was a teenager I had long hair, but my hair gets quite curly. So even though it was if I pulled it straight, it would go down kind of to my rib cage, you know, to my kind of just collarbone. It was, it would just ping back up. So it was a kind of a giant kind of blonde Afro mop. Are your ribs near your collarbone? Uh, yeah, I've got all, all of my bones, <laughs> all of my bones live in a kind of inch wide halo. Just below my neck. It's like just, a rough of bones. Just near your armpits. It's just like a rough of bones and then everything else hangs below like, it's like jellyfish tentacles. If, do you not remember, Kerry? We did meet. I have met you. You, d- you were wearing a coat. I don't know. Yeah, well, okay. If you pulled the coat apart, you well, that's what you would have seen. Just this kind of mess of kind of like sagging flesh just hanging down from a kind of levitating corona of bone. Oh, God. Speaking of corona, I got COVID that time that I met you. But anyway. Yeah, well, you're welcome. <laughs> How are you, Peter, anyway? Because the listeners will be wondering because oh. you've been ill, haven't you? Well, the last time I was this ill was when I got food poisoning at a a Greek restaurant in Soho in the 1990s. So, you know, that's how long it's been. It's Really? A Greek restaurant? Um, Yeah, it was a moussaka. And I've I've now forgiven moussakas, but it took a long, long time. But uh, yeah, I've been absolutely destroyed the last three weeks. And um, Mm. I've been in bed a lot of it as well. It's just, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's heard this, but COVID's not very nice. And yeah. it's all, the other thing is there's all kinds of different, like I've had it twice now. The first time, a couple of days, bounce back, lovely, no problem. Don't know what, anyway, it's, it's, it's I, I, um, I will say one thing. I, I had definitely got a bit complacent about COVID. Like, I mean, yes, I would wear masks when I went on the train and blah, 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 blah. But I had stopped taking it as seriously as perhaps I should have done. I think mm. from now on, I will go back to being a little bit more kind of cautious. Yeah, what do you think Emma has got? Any theories? She's got something from the peasants, and I think that the peasants that have now gone to Barrow are going to spread it all over the farm, and it's going to be a disaster come Christmas. Oh. And it's all going to go back to George, and that's going to ruin Mm. him and Martin's romance. It's really rare for people to get avian flu. Mm. Very rare. I looked. I looked it up the other day, and there was like one case years ago, and it was someone who practically had birds in their home and outside of their home, and spent loads of time with them. So I don't know if it's going to be that. I mean, maybe, maybe it is. They're finally doing COVID after all this time, and maybe they're doing exactly what I just said, which is to sort of say, it's not. It's not the kind of um, you know cakewalk that is being yeah. made that way in the press. I really think they should. Yeah, I mean, thankfully George hasn't asked his dad yet. What do you think's wrong with Emma? <laughs> Yo, sepsis! <laughs> oh, sepsis! Cold, 17 ambulances! <laughs> Which will take about half a day to get to you at this current time in our country. Oh, my God, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's depressing. Oh. How's everything going over there, all right? I'll be uh... over in a month. Oh. Yeah, oh, oh, you've just reminded me. Um, I looked up today a triangulation of Froome because I couldn't remember where you're going to visit your parents, but you've mentioned Froome a lot. So I did that. I thought that's probably quite near. Catford and Brighton. And I've come up with the place where we're going to meet on the 19th of December, which is in the middle of the triangle, Basingstoke. Oh, the glamour. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, (laughs) You haven't been to Basingstoke There is a travel lodge there. It's about £56 for a double room for one adult. Are you going to bring Matthew's big plate? (laughs) Or then I noticed Winchester's quite nearby, which sounds a bit nicer. Have you seen Raiders of the Lost Ark where they realise they're digging in the wrong place because they've got the wrong sun needle thing? I'm going Uh, nowhere near Froome, Kerry. Froome's Froome's in bloody Somerset. I'm going to be in Gloucestershire. That's sort of that way, isn't it? Um, well, my cat lives in Froome and I'll be visiting my cat at some point. There you go. Not... <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be in Stroud, pretty much. Okay. 
Well, I'm sure Basingstoke or Winchester is still the triangulation middle point. Mm. Oh, God, it might be Swindon. Should we do an advert? And then so have we got to talk about Alice? Yeah, I suppose so. A little tiny bit. You reckon? It was quite boring. Well, we managed to get through all of last week without talking about the abortion. I quite liked that we didn't touch on that, though. No, I, I agree too, because it's an abortion. Yeah, lots of those happen. And actually, on that note, I reckon Jill is going to be, because Ben's really like, is, is Gran here? Is Gran here? Wherever he goes. And then mm. at the end of this tonight's episode was wanting to speak to her again or wanting to seek her approval. I reckon she'll be fine. Just in case people thought we were being um, um, deliberately edgy, we didn't consciously no. omit it, did we? It was only afterwards in the WhatsApp when we re-listened, we were like, oh, we didn't mention. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't mention Chelsea going into the hospital at all. Exactly. But I do think that's in a way a positive thing because it's, um, you know, something that is quite not run of the mill i'm not underplaying it but it didn't occur to us as it being necessary to go there in any great length or at all no but brilliantly acted we have to say like when her fear and everything i thought that was really good and her and tracy was fantastic but yeah Yeah. we just didn't uh we had a lot of other things we wanted to talk about so guys next april i will be on three years of not drinking So, um, well well done me, blah, blah, blah. But um, I was listening to the whole Alice thing and I, so you would have thought that I would have been full of compassion and kind of like, yay her and isn't this great. But I just found the whole thing very tedious. I've thought we were all past that. I haven't, even after this long gap, I'm still not over the kind of relentlessness of the Alice Alice and her alcoholism plotline. But to be fair, Peter, you weren't an alcoholic. Well, <laughs> there's a reason why I haven't had a drink in three years. Ah, yeah, I know. But you did you tr- did you ever try to kiss a copper in a lay-by? That's not a booze-dependent decision for me, Matthew. These are you know, <laughs> you're, not, you're comparing <laughs> you're comparing oranges to apples. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, regardless of where I sit or Alice sits on the sliding scale of alcoholism, I you know I I just I did I was surprised by how little empathy I've. I felt, and maybe maybe that's nothing to do with my three years away from drinking. That just I just just wasn't really very excited by it. I don't understand the purpose of it really, unless it was to show Chris being supportive and the something about their dynamic shifting. Because you know, yes, okay, she's well enough to go and do her speak speaking at this clinic that she was at, and then have a slight wobble because of the smell of carrots mm. and think, oh, or I can't Brussels. do this. I was expecting Jacob to appear and go, <laughs> oh, the thing with Brussels sprouts, Alice. <laughs> Obnoxious weed. Uh, but I did think, oh, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? It felt a bit weird, this other patient coming up, Sally, going, hello, um, I, I somehow trust you with my whole diary having met you for five minutes, um, something about them. They they sort of connected, didn't they? And they saw something about themselves in each other at different stages of things. And she was glad to see that Alice had gone through this, whether she has completely or not, is yet to be seen. But I didn't really understand why they were doing this. Mm, Did you? I Well, I mean... I'll, I'm going to cut to the end and then mm. we can work back. There was, like you said, Kerry, there was that bit at the end, I don't know if you noticed, Peter, where Alice said to Chris, can we go home now? And I was like, oh, is this them getting back together? Yeah. Was it the beginnings of it? I was like, is Eddie still running that book? Maybe the bets <laughs> are still active. Uh, isn't it a bit Bouncer's Dream? The whole, you know, it's like all mm. of this, all of this yeah. sort of two years of torture has been for absolutely nothing if they just go back and it's happy families. Did you notice as well that Alice a couple of times or more than two times actually, but about two different situations was saying to Chris, come on, you know, don't let them walk all over you. You've got, this is your thing. It was to do with Jacob coming round later. And oh, what was the other situation? Can't remember. But anyway. The, cu- the couple that were coming to view the cottage first. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I th- There was some weird dynamic there where she was very critical of him not sticking up for himself. 
Well, he hadn't even cleared it with Brian and Jenny. Yeah. About renting it out. Well, they, they. But she was downplaying that, wasn't she? Alice was like, yeah. "Oh, he won't mind." God, we haven't yeah. even spoken about Brian. That was a highlight. Well, He's alive. And his <laughs> name was mentioned briefly. <laughs> Yeah, but he's alive and he's on a health kick and uh, yeah. Je- Jenny is um, joining him in that. Oh, God, Kerry's about to climb on the <laughs> rotary cow cleaning machine. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's miserable as f*** though. It, but they were saying how much he was enjoying it. Mm. Well, oh, no, no, not enjoying. They were saying how obsessed they were with it. I don't think he's doing Kate's son salutations or anything like that. I think he's probably just... Because he tried that briefly, didn't he? Doing a bit of yoga stretching. But whether that was a lovely scene, actually, wasn't it? When he was like, yeah. I really respect what you do, Kate, and I can really see how professional you are, but it ain't for me. Wasn't that where they slipped in Vita Scarolitis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that- Kerry's shame. Kerry's ultimate shame. <laughs> yeah, he turned out he was Lithuanian American oh, and not that at the end of the Hey, yeah. so Alice, um, Alice scrapped, she binned her original speech, which apparently she'd been going over and over and over in the car with Chris and did a bit of improv mm. <laughs> at the, uh, the speech. I don't know. Whilst, I was kind of a... whilst clutching the diary. Yeah, I thought she would get up and go, what's the deal with the Jaeger bombs, huh? <laughs> just, <laughs> just total silence in the room. Uh, mm, it was a bit odd. I Do you want Alice and Chris to get back together? No. No. I, uh, no, I, I don't think I do. But just for the sake of the fact that they would probably just exist in one episode together and we can get them both out of the way, I do. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, Martha's, Martha's going to come on mic at some point, so we're all, all going to have to deal with that. And then disappear mm. for seven years and then come back and then um, change her personality completely. I mean, are we still going to be listening to the Archers in, by then? And that's the question. Have we got it in us? I'll be recording the Cider Shed pod on my own, just talking into the void yeah i'll be dead (laughs) this is the thing kerry i I was thinking this today i was saying charlotte like i've just i've all i've got to do is just live another 10 years so at least cyrus remembers me that's that's pretty much my only ambition in life now um but um if people if people want to talk to us about um chris um your uh absolute love of brian any of the normal nonsense kerry where do they go Come along to at the Cider Shed pod on Twitter, where you'll have such larks and frolics and hilarious fun. Um, we had two new five star reviews as well, lads, that I shared with you, didn't I, earlier today? Yeah, one of them made me feel really guilty. Oh, well, it was kind of like, oh, well, if it wasn't for the Cider Shed, I would probably stop listening to the Archers. I was like, you know, what have we done to this poor bastard? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> that's good oh shit should we stop exactly we're kind of you know we're we're we're, we're kind of we're dealing enablers exactly thank you that's exactly the right word <laughs> oh god um uh, yeah so thank you jenny w dog uh funny irreverent and sarcastic that was the first opener of her um review and tarian 002 uh yeah, that, that was the one. I can honestly say I would have given up listening to the madness of Ambridge if it wasn't for the sanity of the cider shed. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, she's looking forward to my perfecting a Walter Gabriel impersonation. Oh, my God. I'll get practising for you, Tarian. Tarian sounds like it might, might could be a kind of Latvian or Lithuanian name. But anyway... <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe that's me being very ignorant. Kerry, does that sound at all plausible? No. No, all right, there you go. Okay, my ignorance. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, Matthew, Facebook, Instagram, all of that stuff. We've got an Instagram at the Cider Shed Pod. Come and follow us there. I post very silly stories and songs. Um, Madonna came up this week, managed to wedge in Lucky Star, which is my, probably one of my favourite Madonna songs of all time. Oh. Um, We've got a Facebook page called the Cider Shed Podcast. Kenny Higgs got in touch on there to say he was in the woods chopping logs when he heard me say moonshiting and he laughed so loud that a squirrel fell out of a tree. <laughs> not sure. If that, not sure. He said that that definitely happened. But, um, <laughs> not sure if it's true or not. And um, have we got a Mastodon account yet? I have to make oh, one. 
No. Oh, I'm, I mean, I've been threatening to give up Twitter, uh, per, personally, not for Archer stuff. I mean, I just... I've got an Astodon account. I haven't done anything with it. Yeah. I've got it. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to give up Twitter, but I'm because I'm getting a bit desperate because like, I, I think, yeah, I'm going to cling to the wreckage of Twitter until. It's... Yeah, I think I think maybe I might do the same thing, but like, just yeah, the the, 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 the uptick in unpleasantness has been noticeable. Yeah, I've noticed my latest. If I scroll down through top now, it, particularly with the American elections, it's just sending me like pro Republican stuff and not not the latest top stuff. Pro Republican, pro conservative stuff yeah yeah mm. i mean i'm just i just keep waiting to see if lauren bober has lost a seat oh. that's what i'm doing um what we should say by the way if kerry's going to mention our reviews you can support us by leaving a five-star review you could also mm. support us on patreon couldn't you peter yeah it's uh, patreon.com forward slash the cider shed uh which we would be incredibly grateful for um it's, it makes a huge difference um and actually we're saving up all our patreon money for a big christmas blowout so um, in Basingstoke, in Basingstoke, yes. <laughs> so um, I will be uh, uh, distributing the funds come Christmas. Uh, so you know, it would be very, uh, very much appreciated if anyone. I've has got an image of myself walking up the dual carriageway singing Goldfinger <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh dear! Hey, football news? Any of that? Oh God! Fantasy um, football yes. league. Yeah. If you have a team with a lot of Chelsea players in, how's that working, Matthew? I don't Ooh. have a lot of Chelsea Ooh. players because I'm not yep. stupid. Right. Oh, you, yeah. you support them, though, so you are. <laughs> oh, enjoy your time in the sun, Kerry. It won't fucking <laughs> last. You, every, you're all going to break legs in the World Cup and come back. Kerry, you've had quite the week, haven't you? You've been. Oh yes. You've been. You've beaten Chelsea at home with one <laughs> team, and then you smashed them up with the other one. It's been a beautiful couple of weeks for. Yeah. My um, Arsenal, Brighton, Leeds, Tribeca. No, I mean, that Brighton result against Chelsea, that was clearly part of the deal for Potter going to Chelsea. Just let us win. Oh, Matthew. Um, Julie Fremantle is in first place. Kerry, Mm. I mean, you know, Vince punishing Brookfield because of what Ben did. It's like you punishing Chelsea because you hate your bloody ex. Oh, no, I hated Chelsea before that, but he was... Oh, did abs- you? Oh, God, yeah, but he's... Uh... Oh, he adds to it for sure. The first time me and Kerry actually locked horns on Twitter ever was where I messaged her and said, can we find a way of you hating your ex without it shitting on my football team? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he was properly, properly I think that was revolting. the first time we ever spoke on Twitter, wasn't it? Um, Rob Titchen has got nothing on that guy, by the way. I'm in 10th. Um, and oh. 22nd at bottom, relegate the archers, Peter Fickling. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, second is Andrew Beasley, um, LA Brown, third, Max Warbis Mansfield is in number four, <sighs> Warbis Ooh. Dream Team, fourth place. Oh, that's okay. And where's Mariana? Uh, she is, um, 20th. But she, her points, her point score is pretty much the highest every week, and uh, she has got lots of Newcastle players and Arsenal players, and Chelsea play mm-hmm. Newcastle this weekend, and it's pretty much now our apartment derby. Ha <laughs> ha! Interesting. So I'm bottom, as always. You know, it's fitting. It's in my place in the real world. It's my place on the podcast. Oh. It's my place. <laughs> On the football, um, you're the, starting to sound like Tony. That's fair enough. Me and my little train, um, or submarine, gonna, submarine. Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll go. For, oh, I, I'm from a family of submariners, so you know, get more in common with Tony. Have you ever typed up three pages of your submarine recollections, Peter? No, well, I, I, <laughs> I should tell my submarine story sometime. But anyway, uh, but you know, if I want to complete the, my kind of transformation into Tony, <laughs> um, but um, guys, have a lovely weekend. Have yeah. a lovely week. Thanks as always, and um, we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. See you next week. See you, everyone. Bye. Hello.